Hi, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to solve functions today. We're going to use um, three different ways, tables, graphs, and equations. Um, in this lesson, I'm assuming that you are familiar with the function notation, which is um, basically when you write a function, you write that f of x is equal to something, some kind of an equation. Um, instead of I guess the other way of writing it, which would be y equals something or other. We're going to use what I call the function notation, where we write it in function form. This doesn't mean f times x. It just is the function at the point where x is equal to whatever value we put in there. So here's our first example, and that's a table. When you have a table set up, you're sometimes given the x values and asked to solve for the y values or the f of x values, and that's fine. But with this table, we've been given both values, and we're just asked to solve. So again, this is function notation, so that means it's f of x, or f, and then inside the parentheses is our x value. So all we're looking at really is, oops, that was supposed to highlight, is this number right here every time. When x is equal to 0, that's what this is saying, when x is equal to 0, what is my output value? So the input is here, the x value, and the output is our function at that point. So let's go ahead and see. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 5. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to positive 7. And when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 9. And that's it. That's how this function works. Um, where these numbers came from, X values are the input values. They're very random. Um, they can, you can pick whatever input values you're going to use. But the output is when you put this through the function, that's what you end up getting. And we'll, I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But here is basically using a table. Input is usually on the left. Output is on the right. X is your input. The function at X is your output. The other type that um, you can see here is a graph. When you have a graph, you're doing exactly the same thing. You just need to remember that your function is always written as the function at x. So in other words, the x value is what you're putting in here. So looking at my graph, I know that my x-axis is here, and my y-axis is the up and down. So the x value of 1 when x is equal to 1, what is my output? What's my y value? Or where is this graph? All right? So my x value is 1. That's, I know that because 1 is the value that's in there. So when 1, and I'm going to go up and it's about 2. So when the function, when x is equal to 1, my output is equal to 2. When f is e, or x is equal to negative 2, my output is 0. And when f is or when x is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3, my output is approximately there, which is there, uh, 1, 2, 3, and a little bit. We'll say 3 and a half. Um, usually with graphs, they'll line up nicely on numbers. Mine obviously didn't in this case, and that's okay. But I tried to at least line up a couple of points. But you can see how this works. The x value is the number inside the parentheses there, because it's a function at the point x. And the output is like our y value. The third type of question is when you're given the actual function. All right. Now, this could work out in, in one of two ways. You could either be given the function and have it written in a table, like what you see here. You've probably seen tables, or maybe, I don't know, you haven't seen tables, I don't know. Um, a table may look like this instead. You've got your x value here, you've got your f of x value here, and then you're given 2 and negative 2. And you're told to solve those. That's exactly what we've been told to do here. It's just that instead of writing it in a table, we're given it in function notation. So f at the point 2. In other words, when x is equal to 2, what's my function at that point? So I'm going to substitute the value of 2 in everywhere I see the, the letter x. 2 plus 1. So the function at the point 2 
is equal to 3. So I would write that in, 3. The function at the point negative 2 is negative 2 plus 1. The function at negative 2 is equal to negative 1. And you could continue. This is the equation x plus 1, or the function x plus 1. So we just substitute whatever value is there for our x value, and we solve them. Sometimes you'll, you'll be given a table, and you'll just be listed all your x values. That's exactly what you're doing, is you're substituting your x values in where you see x and solving. Let's do one more like this, a little bit more complicated. Um, 2x minus 3, we're going to solve for f of 3 and f of 5. So our function, when x is equal to negative 3, would be 2 times negative 3 minus 3. So in other words, my function at the point negative 3 is equal to 2 times negative 3 minus 3. I do my multiplication first. So this is negative 6 minus 3. So the function at the point negative 3, or my f of negative 3, is equal to negative 9. Negative 6 minus 3 more gives me negative 9. My input was negative 3. My output is negative 9. So my domain is negative 3. My range is negative 5. Let's look at the next one, the function at the point positive 5. And that would be 2 times positive 5 minus 3. So my function, or f at 5, is equal to 2 times 5 is 10. And 10 minus 3 is equal to 7. And that's how you solve these. Essentially, it's substitution, really, is it's, it's all it is. Um, it's just that we are using this function notation, which throws people off a little bit. just want to emphasize this does not mean f times negative 3. It means the function when the value of x is negative 3. You just substitute in and solve. The equations or the functions may become more complicated. You might start getting functions where you have quadratics or other things like that, but you're going to continue to follow the same pattern. Whatever value is in there for x, you substitute it in for x, negative 3, positive 5, or in the other examples, 2 and negative 2. Hope that was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.